hello guys so we'll be starting o level chemistry uh, so let's get right into it the first chapter is states of matter and for that you need to first know the definition of matter so let's start with it so the matter so matter is anything that has mass and occupies volume so anything that has mass And occupies volume that's matter all right so first of all you need to know that matter exists in three states as far as your syllabus is concerned there are the fourth and the fifth and numerous states like plasma and Bose Einstein condensate but we have limited our syllabus to the first three that is solids liquids and gases so let's begin with solids right away uh, so solid so if in english i say that a substance has particles that have very, that are very close together in chemistry i'll say that the substance is solid so first of all it has fixed mass solids have fixed mass now they also have fixed volume and they have fixed shape Apart from this, what you need to know is that solids have strong intermolecular force of attraction. Strong intermolecular forces of attraction. And what you also need to know is that they have very small or negligible intermolecular spaces. Negligible intermolecular spaces all right now two properties originate because of strong intermolecular force attraction and weak intermolecular spaces one being that solids don't flow means that they are not fluids don't flow and solids are incompressible so why are they incompressible so basically compress when a substance is compressible it is basically occupying the empty volume between the particles now in solids as particles are very close together they have no intermolecular spaces and therefore they are incompressible some facts you need to know Apart from this, what you also need to know is the arrangement and movement of particles. So let's move on to that. So first of all, arrangement. Particles are close together in a regular arrangement. So what you'll write is particles. Are close together in a regular arrangement or you can say in a lattice in a regular arrangement is much easier arrangement and as for the so uh, what I want to mention is that anything that implies regular arrangement of particles such as crystal lattice or any word that alternate or any alternative word that you can use it will be acceptable all right so arrangement is done now we have to move on to the uh, movement of particles movement the particles vibrate at mean positions this is the only mode of movement of particles in solids so now i'm going to draw the diagrammatic representation of solids that you are asked to draw in the exams okay so if you're asked ever in the exams to draw the representation of solids this is how you'll do it uh, so that's all for solids now i'll move on to gases uh liquids 
So yeah, let's start with liquids. First of all, they also have fixed mass. Liquids also have fixed mass. They have fixed volume. Now I need you to clear this misconception. Liquids have fixed volume. Some students have this misconception that liquids do not have fixed volume, but they do have fixed volume. That you need to know. They have fixed volume. However, they do not have fixed shape, or you can say they take up the shape of the container. The shape of the container. Uh, apart from this, what you need to know is that liquids have few intermolecular forces of uh, few intermolecular spaces. Uh, and why is that? Because they have strong intermolecular force of attraction as compared to gases, but they are weaker as compared to solids. So what you write is normally strong intermolecular force of attraction. I am writing IMFA to shorten it up, but you'll have to write full intermolecular force of attraction in the exams. You're not allowed to write IMFA. Uh, and I'm write, writing as compared to solid, uh, as compared to gases in brackets. If you're ever asked to compare it with solids, then of course they're weaker. Strong intermolecular force attraction, uh, few intermolecular spaces, apart from this, liquids are very slightly compressible, slightly compressible, however they are fluids because they can flow. So liquids are fluids are fluids apart from this what you need to know is that the arrangement and move, uh, movement of particles first of all the arrangement so particles are close together in an irregular arrangement close together in an irregular arrangement and I'll show you the representation of liquids in the exam just after we complete this in, in an irregular arrangement. And finally, the movement of particles, the movement. So as for the movement, they are vibrational, rotational and translational. Vibrational, rotational. and translational movement translational movement or or you can also say constant random motion constant random motion now i have to explain you what is the meaning of vibrational, rotational, and translational? So first of all, what is vibrational? Vibrational is when a particle is moving at its mean position, uh, like from here to here, and then returning back to its mean position. And uh, what is rotational? That it is rotating upon its own axis. Its movement is in, is in this manner, actually. And what is translational that this particle moves and actually gets here this is translational movement now we often ask you how to draw on uh, how will you represent liquids in a diagrammatic representation and I'll just show you that so here it is so are you seeing that particles few particles have distances between them and some don't uh, so this type of arrangement is also known as clustering together. So you can say that particles are clustered together. Particles are clustered together. And are you noticing how I have not filled up the entire box? And there's a reason behind it. You have to show the liquids as settled, uh, settled particles. Uh, they cannot fill the whole of the box. They have to. There has to be space between them, and they have to be shown as settled particles. Uh, so uh, you might notice that 
few of them ha are single particles while others are three particles and two particles they can be arranged in any manner because they are clustered together now we'll move on to gases so yeah let's start with gases so they also have fixed mass now are you noticing that mass is always fixed now why is that because mass is the amount of matter present in a substance and it can never change so all the states solids liquids and gases they all will have fixed mass so fixed mass they have non-fixed or you can say they take up the shape of the container take up the shape of the container and they take up the volume of the container the volume of the container what does that mean it is that if i have a cylindrical container for example and i have gas in it and i have filled gas in it it will cover up the whole of the space inside the container inside the cylindrical container and the volume of the gas inside will be the same as the volume of this cylinder so that's what you need to know apart from this you also need to know that uh, they have weak or negligible intermolecular force of attraction again i'm telling you i'll be writing imfa to shorten it up but you are not supposed to write this in the exams uh, negligible intermolecular force of attraction and particles have large intermolecular force of attraction uh, large intermolecular spaces now we can say large intermolecular spaces but we tend to use better wordings so we say they have large empty volume between particle empty volume between particle uh, now i'll explain you for example this is a container containing a gas for example and this is the part uh, this is the these are the particles now for example for example you finish all the intermolecular spaces and this is the container the same container the particles will hardly occupy i guess this much volume now all of this was empty space all of this was empty space but that is still considered the volume of the gas so what does that mean is that volume of gas or again you can say volume of container is equal to volume of gaseous particles volume of gaseous particle plus empty volume now that's a fact it will consists of both empty volume between the particles as well as the volume of the particles themselves so that's what you need to know so uh, they have large empty volume between particles and therefore gases have uh, the arrangement which i'll just state arrangement of particle so gases molecule the particles and gases are farther apart farther apart and irregularly arranged right and uh, now the movement of particle they are again at a uh, constant random motion constant so here you go guys this is the movement of particles they are in constant random motion or again you can say vibrational rotational and translational movement there is also a thing i want uh, i want to mention is that the difference between the arrangement and movement of particles between liquids and gases and i'll be just mentioning it uh, so let's just mention it here okay 
Now, if you are asked to do a comparison between liquids and gases uh, in terms of the arrangement of movement of particles, first of all, arrangement. Arrangement. So, in liquids, particles are close together, while in gases, while in gases, particles are farther apart. Are farther apart. This is one point, and I'll be mentioning the second one. Okay, so uh, movement. So in liquids, as in gases, as compared to liquid, in gases, particles are at a faster random motion. Now the motion is random, but it is faster in gases. So that's what you need to know. I'll be also drawing some models that students tend to draw in the exams of gases, the diagrammatic representations. So you need to choose which one is correct. Now here are the three options. So let's say this is A, this is B and this is C. Just give it a minute and think which one is correct. Just pause the video and think. Okay, so I hope you have come to a decision. and actually let's analyze them let's see the first one uh the first one cannot be possible in gases particles are not so uh so regularly arranged these are this is a very regular arrangement so a is wrong now let's go for b now according to a definition it fulfills the criteria for a gas particles are farther apart they are in random arrangement so that at first glance seems right, but if you read your syllabus, it is mentioned that gas needs to be at least shown with five particles. So this is wrong. Now, if you see C, if you look at C, it's perfect. Particles are far apart; they are randomly arranged, and there are at least five particles. So C is correct. So I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this and more amazing lectures are coming so be prepared.